Thank you for coming to our demonstration. I am Shi Chen Zhang. This is Tom Gerals. The title of our talk will be Understanding and Mitigating the Effects of GPS Vulnerabilities. Um, basically, PMUs are becoming more prevalent across the power system network. Um, as such, they are vulnerable to different types of attacks. One attack in particular that we're looking at is the GPS spoofing attack. We'd like to show the feasibility of such an attack and then hopefully develop mitigation strategies so that these attacks do not occur in the future. PMUs use a GPS receiver front end in order to derive a time synchronization across all measurements across the network. They do so by having the GPS receiver receive the signals from the satellites and then computing a local receiver clock offset. That local receiver clock offset is applied to all the local clocks and corrects the errors in the clock so that all the measurements are synchronized. However, an error in the local clock from spoofing will introduce an error in the PMU's phase measurements. That in turn causes errors in the, all the algorithms that depend on the PMU's phase, al uh, phase measurements. Those include voltage stability algorithm, fault impedance computations, and fault locationing algorithms. So there are a number of different types of attacks that have been shown on GPS receivers. Uh, the first note is a signal level attack. It's also called a replay attack. This involves changing the timing of the GPS signal in order to introduce offsets in the range measurements to the satellites. This in turn causes errors in the calculation to the receiver position and to the receiver clock offset. The se second type of attack that's been demonstrated is a GPS is a data level attack uh, in order to cause the receiver to crash. This is done uh, by doing things like setting the satellite's orbital radius to zero in order to induce a divide by zero in the receiver calculations. These are obviously non-stealth stealth attacks simply designed to uh, cause massive failures in the receiver. The type of attack that we are demonstrating is, is one that is yet to be demonstrated. It involves changing the data encoded on the signal in order to induce uh, subtle errors on the receiver. This is done by introducing data that will change the receiver clock offset while keeping the receiver position uh, static. In this way, the um, in this way, the attack will not be detected, and so the receiver will continue to uh, appear to operate properly. Our attack me uh, methodology consists of three basic steps. The first is to calculate the changes to the data that will introduce the clock offset that is desired. Um, the second step involves taking over the track tracking loop of the GPS receiver in order to get it to follow the signal that we are generating instead of the true GPS signal. This step has been demonstrated by several groups already. The third step involves injecting the data that we calculated in step one into the GPS signal that we are broadcasting and have the receiver accept it as legitimate data in order to introduce the clock offset that we desire. Uh, since the second step has been demonstrated already, we're, today for our demonstration, we're gonna focus mainly on these first and third steps. So that brings us to our demonstration. We have our hardware set up over here. Uh, here you can see the National Instruments signal generator and up converter that we're using to actually generate this false GPS signal. This hardware is con uh, controlled by software on our desktop computer. And the signal that is generated from this uh, hardware is then fed into our GPS receiver, which you can see here. The GPS receiver outputs the position uh, back to the desktop, and a plot of that can be seen on the screen to the left. On the top plot on the screen, you can see the receiver position, and the bottom plot shows the receiver clock offset. In addition, this receiver is outputting a pulse per second timing signal. That signal is being fed into our oscilloscope here, and the output of the oscilloscope is seen on the four plots you see here on our screen. Uh, on the oscilloscope output, this blue, pl this blue line is uh, representing the receiver pulse per second output and the pink line shows the reference pulse per second from a true GPS receiver. What you'll see is when we inject our false data in the GPS signal, which will happen in about 60 seconds here, you'll see that our, G that our pulse per second will shift by 500 microseconds relative to that true GPS signal. Uh, so again, basically to just give an overview of what we're doing, we're generating a false signal using our, our hardware that's being fed into the receiver and the pulse per second that's being generated by the receiver will shift relative to the true GPS signal. Uh, in order to sh uh, show that this, uh, the timing is jumping, we're first uh, feeding the 
uh, GPS receiver with a true GPS signal so that when that uh, jump occurs, you'll see that the pulse per second will shift. Uh, in addition, you'll see that the GPS receiver, you'll see that the receiver position, which is being plotted on the top here, will not shift uh, uh, by more than the general uh, variation in the GPS uh, receiver position will shift just due to the movement of the satellites and things like that. As you look at the plot, you see that the scale size for the receiver position here is uh, three meters on this plot. So that gives you some idea of the scale that you're looking at there. In addition, you can also see the receiver clock offset here. And you'll see that this value will jump by 500 microseconds, which is, again, is the value that we've uh, decided to use for this demonstration. So I'm expecting the, uh, the change in data values to uh, go into effect any, any second here. Uh, for this attack, we've decided, uh, so there you go, you see it right now. You see that originally the uh, pulse per second that we were generating was uh, located right here. And then as our false data was implemented, it shifted by 500 microseconds. Uh, as we look at the receiver position and clock offset plots on the computer, you'll see that the receiver position does not shift dramatically. Uh, in and then looking at the clock offset, you see that 500 microseconds again here shown by the jump in the plot. Uh, so yeah, we were able to show that we were able to calculate the data uh, that will give us this clock offset while keeping the position stable. All right, so Tom just showed us an example of data level spoofing. Um, I will explain how we actually get the data manipulation done so that we introduce the maximum amount of phase measurement offset. Basically, we formulate the problem as an optimization problem where we uh, maximize the objective function, which is the receiver clock offset. The receiver clock offset is linearly related to the PMU's phase error. So therefore, when we maximize the receiver clock offset, we ma maximize the PMU phase measurement error. The decision variables are the satellite's ephemerides. These ephemerides basically are parameters that allow you to compute the satellite's position, which in turn affects the computed receiver position as well as the clock offset. We place some constraints on the optimization program, and those include the bounds on the satellite's ephemerides. We allow them to not change significantly from their nominal value, and also the computed receiver position. That way, the post-spoofing computed receiver position does not change significantly from the pre-spoof receiver position so that it does not raise any red flags in form of attack detection. Now, some of the applications that depend on PMU data include fault identification, equivalent network algorithms, and also stability monitoring algorithms. One algorithm that we looked in particular is the voltage stability monitoring algorithm based on thevenin impedances. So here, you see that the true impedance is computed by taking two time instances of the PMU's measurements, the voltage and the current. And then you just basically divide the voltage difference by the current difference and then compute the thermal impedance. However, by spoofing, we could introduce an error, which is shown in red, epsilon theta, in the angle of the voltage magnitude and the current measurements. So then uh, when you cause that kind of error, what happens is that when there is no spoofing, you have the black lights showing the load impedance and the thevenin impedance, and the load impedance is actually greater than the thevenin impedance, so the system is actually stable. However, when the thevenin impedance becomes larger than the load impedance, then the system is actually deemed unstable. So by spoofing it in a particular way, we could allow the algorithm to compute a thevenin impedance that is greater than the load impedance, which is right here, and you see that that introduces a false alarm. By analogy, we could also spoof the system such that when the system is actually unstable, you can make it appear as it's stable and cause a misdetection because the magnitude of thevenin impedance here is lower than the lo load impedance when it's actually not. So the reason we're implementing these attacks is in order to figure out how we can design better detection and mitigation techniques in order to uh, deal with these type of attacks. Uh, the types of uh, detection algorithms that we can design generally fall into three categories. The first is software uh, techniques. These can be easily implemented on the GPS receiver software. These involve things like checking the signal power of your received signal so that when a uh, false GPS signal is broadcast, uh, you'll see that jump in power level on the receiver 
uh, and so that you'll know that a false signal may be present. The second type of techniques makes use of the fact that the PMUs are connected on a communication network. You can make use of this communication network by doing things like checking the data received at different receivers to make sure that they, the data received is consistent for all the different receivers. You can also check the data you receive against external archives um, of those satellites ephemerides. The third type of detection and mitigation technique involves actually implementing uh, new hardware. This involves things like having multiple antennas for a single receiver so that you can calculate the angle of arrival for the signal so that you can ensure that it's actually coming from a satellite and not from a ground-based uh, signal generator. Any one of these mitigation or detection techniques does have weaknesses, but with a combination of these, we believe that we can make uh, attacking a GPS receiver uh, prohibitively difficult. Now that we have a testbed for generating these types of GPS receiver attacks, we can implement these uh, detection techniques on our receiver and test them with actual attacks to, to see how they will react in order to design a technique that is uh, effective as a defense mechanism. Thank you.